After the good results I was able to achieve with the first versions of a Wegnehammer, I developed another design from my leftover box. Number 3 consists of a frame made of flat iron with a steel tube as the core onto which 400 turns of enameled copper wire are wound. The magnetic field is guided along the frame in such a way that the loop gets closed via a movable piece of steel tube as soon as the coil is energized. The flat iron and steel tube are anything but optimal so that eddy current losses and magnetic saturation consume a noticeable portion of the input energy. However, that doesn't mean that version 3 of my Wegner hammer doesn't work. I use a piece of 0.2mm tungsten wire as the electrode. The resulting engraving is less deep than in my previous attempts, but the lines are still clearly visible. Let's have a more systematically look at my designs and first measure the maximum current that flows through the electromagnets built so far at 12V DC voltage. With version 1 the reading is around 6 Amps. For version 2 it's about 5 Amps. And with version 3 we get about 3.5 Amps. It can be seen that the displayed value decreases during the measurement, which is because of the fact that the coil wire heats up significantly due to the current flowing. Let's measure the forces with which the magnets pull at this maximum current, which is not quite 30 grams... ...a little more than 60 grams... ...and about 180 grams. In versions 2 and 3 the remaining air gap is largely responsible for the lifting force, so the measurement was carried out so that a gap of around 1mm remains when the electromagnet is energized. For the function as a lifting magnet, the greatest possible force with the smallest possible current is desired, but for use as a Wegner hammer, a second function has to be considered. The highest possible destructive power at the tip of the hammer and for this a rather high current is an advantage. It is therefore important to find a good compromise for a Wegner hammer. To be able to carry out further experiments, I designed version 2.1. Like version 2.0, this works with a compliant mechanism to guide the hammer. However, the electromagnet is attached to the side of the frame. This means that a wire can be inserted from the top into the press tube that serves as a hammer. With wires as electrodes I have achieved the best engraving results so far. The electrode is fixed at the bottom of the tube with a screw. Current and force are the same as with version 2.0, because the same electromagnet is used. Here I engrave another steel disc using the 0.2mm tungsten wire. Tap water acts as a coolant without the pump being switched on. In contrast to classic electric discharge machining, conductivity does not play such a big role, so deionized water does not have to be used. You can hear that the hammer gets stuck every now and then. The engraved lines of the small 15x16mm graphic are nice and smooth, but there is a gap whenever the electrode has stuck. As I said, version 2.1 is designed for experimentation, so I mounted a second electromagnet of the same design on the back of the frame, which also pulls on the armature. In the first attempt I connect the two coils in series. This halves the current to just around 2.5 Amps. 
The lifting force can be measured at around 40 grams, which is significantly less than the 60 grams with just one electromagnet, as the coils connected in series draw a significantly lower current. With the pump now switched on, let's engrave the next disc. Here too it can be observed that the electrode sticks on the workpiece for a short time. All in all engraving works well with the lowest current in the test series. As a result we get very fine lines. At the penguin's pupil you can clearly see that there are two ovals close together. The low current does not remove as much material and the engraving is correspondingly less steep, which makes such fine details more visible. For the next engraving, the two coils are connected in parallel. The current increases to 8 Amps... ...the lifting force of the hammer to 130 grams. With these values, the electrode never gets stuck to the workpiece and the engraving is processed without any problems. The more powerful sparks are also significantly louder. As expected, the lines are engraved deeper on the steel disc. Accordingly, the two ovals on the penguin's pupil are no longer so clearly separated from each other. Let us therefore note that the force with which the hammer is pulled upwards should not be too small, otherwise the electrode can weld to the workpiece and that a higher current actually leads to more material removal. That's why I've now implemented a coil with only 200 turns of enamel copper wire in version 3 of my hammer. Furthermore, the core is made of ferrite as the hammer sometimes stuck to the steel tube due to the residual magnetization. The current is now about 5 Amps. The lifting force drops to around 90 grams. The fan ensures that the electromagnet does not end up in smoke during continuous operation. Design number 3.1 of my Wegner hammer works very well, despite the post-apocalyptic look. With the now higher current I engraved the last metal disc for this video. For further experiments I ordered thinner wire to use as electrodes to check whether deep and thinner lines could be achieved. If you would like to support me in my experiments, you can purchase a Homofazions coin as can be seen here on my website. Many thanks to everyone who has already invested in my projects using this really hard currency. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.